Commissioner Manella. Yay, or here. Commissioner Hightower. Here. Commissioner Webb. Here. Commissioner Doss. Here. And Mayor Butler. Here. <coughs> Have the minutes of the public hearing on April 27th. Any addition or corrections? If not, minutes be approved. Next, special meeting at May the 4th. Any addition or correction? If not, uh, be approved. Regular meeting of May the 11th. Minutes. Any additional correction? Boy, we had a busy meeting that night. <laughs> Hopefully, macro. We had 31 items on the agenda that night or something, or 20 something. 24. Right? Well, we were busy. Okay. Now, minutes of a continued meeting on May the 14th. If no addition or correction, they will be approved. Special meeting minutes of May the 18th. No addition or correction, they will be approved. Special meeting of May the 21st. If no addition or correction, May will be approved. project this is uh, the second phase of our three phase project down there and uh, we're, what our plans are is to move everybody out of the old buildings <coughs> into this this new lean to and we'll we'll pay for this with the uh, cost on savings from the heat that just goes out to whatever cracking up that building so uh, bid was for Actually, I got two things here. I got uh, uh, the building bid was for $27,309 and four inch concrete floor with uh, four inch rock was 7980 So it's my motion to approve these bids. Second, what's the total? 35. 35? Something. Yeah, it'd be 35. 35. Two. Okay, you got the $60,000 this year for, for the yeah, but you, do you have the money? I mean, uh, absolutely. Just because it's budgeted doesn't mean the money is there. Well, it's he's a finance commissioner. Absolutely. He got the money. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's your motion. I, I know. I know. I take it out of gas tanks. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Was there a second? I uh, was well, going to say it. Yeah, I'll say it. Call the roll. Commissioner Manella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Dawson. Yay. Mayor Butler. Yay. <clears throat> uh, what's this approved bid for new for Mayor Sargent? Well, this is a this is another item that we had uh, been looking at, and what this there there are several things this machine can do for us. It is a machine. Yes, it's a machine. It's it actually will help us locate uh, valves. A hydraulic wrench on it because the next EPA move is the turning the valves on probably a, a yearly basis. Make sure they work. Yeah, make sure they work. And the other part about it is it's got a, Terrence can explain it better. It's got kind of like a, it, it's like one of our uh, uh, sewer machines that you know, sprays water there. And, it, and what it does is it will. 
help locate uh, uh, water lines, sewer lines, uh, fiber optic, gas lines, and uh, you can tell the difference between it, fiber it, optic. You can't tell, but it, it, it can. It, it eliminate cutting it. it. It eliminate us boring into it or cutting it. It, it tells you that there's something there. Is that what we're saying? We'll, we'll uncover it with that with that warning. Yeah. And, and without doing damage to it and. Uh, yeah, what you call potholing? Yes. Yes. So. Sort of like a mine detector. Yeah. So. The military. Yes. Anyway, they looked at three different machines. The, you know, this one here, the GIS for uh, locating the valves was. You know, it what was. You like? It was ten thousand dollars more. This this right here is definitely the better machine. I mean, safety wise, I mean, those guys will. They'll. Yeah. It's a good machine. Yeah, and you know, it's like you know, Gail and I talk. You know, we we they start mandating us having to turn those valves in the, in the next few years. This is you know definitely going to save on on work costs. The price of one I don't know the price of one. What the price is? Sixty-eight thousand two hundred thirty-five. Wow. Hey, we're gonna have it for a while. I got a bill today from Amber that had we had this machine, it would have helped us. It, it might have helped us, may not helped us. It was for over a thousand dollars on our spilling project, and we're going to contest it because I don't like it none whatsoever. They didn't even know this gas line was there, and we we was beyond the boundary that was marked by Julie, but uh, by about four feet. We cut into their line and they came out and repaired it. <coughs> the next day, we hit the line again and their marks was off by 14 feet. So, well, I may they, have a letter for you to write. You know. Are they expecting the charges for both times or no, just the last? Just, just the first. The first. The first. Okay. But, you know, they didn't know where the line was. They had. They was out there three different times, and we we finally thought we was within our realm, but obviously we wasn't. And we got a thousand some odd dollar bill that uh, I don't like, and you know may may only have the satisfaction of telling them that we don't like it because you know back in the day when we hit you know when they hit our line we took care of business. And, and, yeah, yeah. You know, if we'd have had this gadget that we just authorized, would it have resolved yes. that problem? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, I did talk with Amarin Gas, and we are it is marked in dispute, and they have some more information they have to get from Superintendent Connell. Okay. And so we currently do not have to pay for it until more information is received. Okay. okay. But. It's my motion to uh, purchase this machine for sixty-eight thousand two hundred thirty-five dollars. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Hightower. Yes. Mr. Webb. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Okay. What's about uh, transferring Tyler Barber from part-time dispatcher to full-time? <coughs> Item number uh, three and five kind of go together. Uh, Shane Harris, who is a full-time dispatcher, uh, has left. So what I need to do is Tyler Barber currently works in the, uh, I call it a part-time, full-time position. It's a part-time position that he works 30 to 40 hours a week. Um, and Tyler is going to move up into uh, the spot being vacated by Shane Harris. That would be the full time. Dispatch. Yeah, that's a full time position. So I need to approve moving Tyler into that position. And then I also need to approve uh, replacing Tyler. By another Tyler. We got Tyler's. So that's two Tyler's. Yeah. Well, that's an, that's that's another that's that's something totally different. <coughs> um, I don't know if you wanted me to go into that before you take well, care of this. Well. Uh, okay, now, 
It is, th this is a new position we're talking about. Uh, number four is. Yeah. Number right. four, we have two, two uh, part-time dispatchers that work less than 20 hours, so we don't get into the benefits, but we need, we need another one because we have, we have so many uh, overtime hours that we need, a, we need a third one to fill in the holes. Like we have five, five hour shift holes. Um, so I, I want to make a third part-time dispatcher. That way we're not paying uh, as much overtime because I figured out the average rate of a dispatcher that we're paying, this is just the average fee, because I have a dispatch supervisor and regular dispatchers, and averaging their salary without longevity, training, schools, we're paying 31.65 an hour if one of those guys stays over and works these shifts, if we mandate them, and... No, wait, 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 wait. Forget the uh, benefits, what, what is the base hourly rate? If I get a part time, if I get a part time part timer, it's eighteen fifty nine an hour. Okay, and if it's a full timer. If it's a full timer, then we're paying about thirty one sixty five an no, hour. No, but you're talking but about the over, benefits. That's for, that's for an overtime rate. That's at the overtime rate. Right. Yeah, that's at the overtime rate for filling for filling these overtime shifts. It's a screwy deal because uh, whether, you're, whether you're part time or full time, they still come in at the same rate, right? rate one and then after right. so long they go to rate two so actually well our, our part-time dispatchers stay at 18.59 an hour I, I know that but if, if let's let's take uh barber yes okay is he at 18.59 now yes okay so he'll remain that for a specific period of time and once that time's passed he'll go now that he's moving into full-time yes okay right. what is the full-time rate Full time starts at eighteen fifty nine an hour. When the, when they get into just full time, they're making twenty sixty five an hour. Okay, so there is a couple of dollars difference between the part time and the full time. Yes. Okay, and then when you got into that thirty one dollars, that was the overtime rate. That's what they're making on overtime. Yeah, that's why I want to do the third the third part time person. That way. I can pay someone eighteen fifty nine an hour to work some of this overtime instead of thirty one dollars an hour. Makes sense. What do you think about that, Jim? It makes good sense. Well, the thing is about Barber, if he's working in excess of thirty hours a week, we're paying him benefits anyway. Yes, that's that's for the next that's for the next meeting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's twice I've walked myself right into that. <laughs> Anything over twenty dollars twenty hours a year. So yeah, so, 20, you know, to me, that position, we might as well, yeah. going to uh, get the benefit of the IMRF. Oh, we have to make that to work a thousand hours. That, that gives you a thousand hours a yeah. year, and if you're over a thousand hours, yeah, yeah. then you have to get the IMRF benefit. Yeah, to me, this full-time, part-time position we've had for years, I don't know why we've had it that way, but we might as well just call it full-time, because that's what it is. They're getting 40 hours a week. They're getting all the benefits. So I would like just just call it full time. What it is, just call it what it is. Well, but anything over that's... twenty hours, I would right. say it should be considered. Yeah. It's just language that needs cleaned up. So three and five are tied together. We're just basically taking Tyler from the full time position. Is that right? Yeah. Basically, we're taking him from that full time part time spot, uh, moving him to full time, and then we're and we're approving replacing him. Next. Week. Yeah, next well, meeting. I, next meeting, I'll give you. An, I'll give you the name of the person. Yeah. Okay. But then you want another part time in Tyler Smith. Yeah, and yeah, and then that's number four. Yeah, to make to make the we're third part time part timer and make and give that spot to Tyler Smith. Okay. okay so you want to create the new dis position for a part time dispatcher, and then uh, aside from that, hire Tyler Smith as a part time police dispatcher. To fill that new part-time position, yes. Okay, I guess I'll... Do we we need a motion on each one? Or? Yeah. Tyler Barber is going to the full-time or part-time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve uh, transferring of Tyler Barber from part-time police dispatcher to full-time okay. police dispatcher. Second. Call roll. Mr. Vanilla? Yay. Mr. Hightower? Yay. Mr. Webb? Yay. 
Commissioner Goss? Yay. Yeah. Mayor Butler. Yay. Yeah. So you got this on first. Now, uh, we need a motion on item five. I'd like to most approved to hire a part time police dispatcher, which would be a new position, <clears throat> less than 20 hours per week. And approve hiring Tyler Smith as part time police dispatcher. Uh, that's, that's, that's item, that's item yeah, four. I, I want to take five first. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Huh. I'll withdraw what I just said and I'll restate uh, under item five approval to replace part time dispatcher position vacated by Tyler Barber, uh, 30 to 40 hours per week. Second. Call roll. Commissioner Vanella? Uh, Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. Mayor Butler. Yay. Now I'll go for four. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve uh, to hire part time police dispatcher, which is a new position, less than 20 hours. Uh, approve hiring Tyler Smith as part time police dispatcher. Second. Call roll. Commissioner Vanella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. And Mayor Butler. Yay. Okay. Who can tell us about the uh, hub? Uh, Good evening, everyone. How are we doing this evening? I was hiding in the corner from you, Mayor. I didn't want you to see me over there. Well, as you guys are all well aware, we have a little bit of an issue with the locker room flooring and the airlock flooring over at the hub where it's uh, deteriorated due to the use. Um, you know, there's a construction piece where we're looking into that as far as getting some some recoup from that as far as construction is concerned. But at the moment here, uh, we're at this part where we need to move forward and get some new flooring options there. In your packets there, you have some, some bids, all from RP Coating uh, is the only one that re returned a bid to us. It's actually for two different types of products. You have a quartz product and an aggregate product. Uh, the first set of bids were really just for the locker rooms themselves. And then after that, we went back through and said all of that flooring, it's all that same material, which is the brushed concrete with the green stain over the top of it, um, what would the cost factor be for that? Uh, to talk in regards to the quartz floor, that is a five-part floor where they will fill in all of that. They'll throw speckled flex down over the top of it, and then they'll put a clear coat over the top. So it will be slip resistant, which is what we need certainly for that area, but will give us the flexibility to clean that easier and will maintain. It's a product that uh, has currently been placed down at the new high school area there. And uh, it's also a product that I have lots of years of experience with at multiple facilities. Uh, it has about a duration of about 15 to 20 years before it needs to be redone. When it does need to be redone, it just takes more flakes and a new top coat, typically. Well, I have a little concern here that this has been in operation, what, less than six months, and we're already spending $33,000 on the floor. Now, how much of this is to repair the original flooring? All of it. All of it. Now, yes. there, there's something that bothers me about that. We, we spent all this money to put in the floor, and it doesn't last six months. It now, is the floor that was specced by the architect. Is what? It was the floor that was specced by the architect when the building was constructed. But it doesn't matter. Uh, and that, and it's, but it's failing. And everybody has seen it. Now, Commissioner okay, Goss has been it, there well, several well, times. Well, somebody's got to be at fault to, to, to get the flooring that only lasts six yeah. months. We have met with Sherman Williams. We've met with Sherman Williams consultant. We've met with Sher Sherman Williams three times now on, on various different occasions with different levels of their, their company there. Uh, they have not at this point um, said that it's a product fail. Uh, so they don't feel that there's any product fail, but it's obvious, you know, if you walk through the hub and take a well, look at you, that, you got a it's floor failed. That, that is defective. Without question. Well, what, what else could it be except a failure of the product? Well, I agree completely, and we are looking at some remedy in regards to that maybe through Ross we, Construction. Maybe we need to call upon uh, Attorney Green to help in the uh, negotiation on this because that's ridiculous. We, we have not recouped any yet, but we have reached out to see what the. Did, did they give any indication that uh, it, it may have been improperly installed? There's been nothing to this point that looks like there was any improper installation or anything like that. Somebody's at fault. Have you, you talked to the architect? 
you talk to the architect on it? Says we certainly have talked with the architect on it. Uh, shakes his head at me and tells me that's not right. I agree. Well, that's no answer. He's right? Correct. Uh, his problem. Get together with the... But it, it, that doesn't cure our problem because no. we still have a floor. Whether we... Well, it up I know, I know. Yeah, but this we, needs to be done, but why should we spend $33,000 to oh, correct right. somebody's mistake? It, that's what I'm talking it's, about. It's almost 48. All right. 48, it's, it's actually more like 48 to do the whole thing. Why should we be out 48,000 on a floor that's only six months old? Obviously, the, the, the material is defective or whoever put it down didn't know what they were doing, or maybe it was a combination of both. So far, Steve hasn't made any progress trying to talk to Sherwin Williams, who had the product. The architect so far has said, yeah, you got a problem. I think it's time for Steve Green, the city attorney, to get involved. Steve, can you, two Steves. Let's, let's mail. Steve squared. We can make it happen. <laughs> okay. A guys, absolutely. I have no problem in doing that. You know, the, the biggest reason why we moved forward um, with Ross Construction, you know, helping us find RP Cody's and doing that is um, it's a major eyesore on a beautiful building. Well, it's obvious that something has to be done. It's equally obvious that somebody is at fault. Let's find out who it is and let them pay the bill. The sooner the better in some respects there. We need warmer weather certainly to do that because to do this, each area, if you will, there's three locker rooms that need to be redone and then the airlock which leads into the pool and that party room's off to the side there. Each one of those is going to take approximately a week when you talk about the actual work that needs to be done and the cure time of the product there. Um, the locker rooms are the easy, easy part because you can shut down one locker room and then we have two other open so we still have a men's and women's capability there. Once we get done with the three locker rooms, you're talking about the airlock, which therefore you lose your, your easy access to the pool. We'd have to use the outdoor entrance to the pool to have, gain any access there and build a kind of a portable scanning station at that point. Well, can you, uh, so we would need warmer weather. Can you put that off? Uh, the, the, the first, you, you're talking about having the uh, rooms uh, for the men and the women and uh, that being accommodated, but now you're talking about the airlock and, and requiring people to go outside. Can you delay working on that area until later? We can certainly delay anything. There's no issue with making a delay on it. Well, the big thing is I want to make sure that, that, we've, that, that our, our members realize that it's not acceptable in our eyes at this point we're making some remedies to that that's the biggest thing because that is the most highly trafficked area in the entire building is through that airlock right there yeah. and right now it's it it's rough it's rough well, well what i'm thinking about is uh, inconveniencing people that they're, they're here there is the pool and they have to go outside to get into the pool well, on that side, we'd have to really, and that's why I said we need the warm weather on that. We'd have to be very upfront, probably with well months' notice there, letting them know that, and let's just, you know, since we're coming right up on June, let's just say July, uh, starting in July for a couple, for one week there, you would need to access through our, our temporary entrance for the pool there if you're going to use the pool. I know that that's not the exact answer that we want there. But we've got, we, you know, we have to make something. Because right now, retention becomes our number one priority at the hub. I think that we ought to proceed with this bid and let Steve then recover as best he can. But if you wait on legal process, we need to be next year for which to settle. I would agree with that statement. I think we need to proceed, get it done, and try to recover our costs, as the mayor said. But I don't think we can delay this very much longer. Steve, is there any uh, safety hazards uh, for the failed coating right now, or is it just aesthetics? I don't believe that there's any true safety hazard at this point because we, we currently have a brushed concrete, okay. so the slip hazard isn't really there. Okay. Um, and, and as far as the, the, the facility being clean, we're sanitizing the floors and we're going through and doing the mopping and doing all those things there. So there's nothing as far as, as health or safety is really concerned. It's truly aesthetics at this point. Um, it, it's definitely starting to cost us a little bit on the membership side, so we want to nip that in the bud sooner rather than later. Okay, so we got a motion to accept this. Uh, is there a second? Well, there's, there's 
The so there's actually two bids. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to accept the, the thirty-three thousand. The thirty-three thousand and, and the, the fourteen acres. Uh, and the fourteen acres. Yes. Okay, so your motion will cover both. Yes, that's right. I second that motion. Okay, second call roll. Commissioner Manella. Yay. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Doss. Yay. Mayor Butler. Yay. Anything else, please? Not on floors. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Steve, yes, sir. We got this same type of pouring down at the fire department when I worked there, and they, they've had to replace it within the last few years. Uh, yeah, it lasted a long time. I was going to say it's yeah. been there 30 years. Yes, yes, plus. But this this company here, what are, what are they going to do in regards to fumes, or have they come up with something that... Uh, They've uh, less nauseous. yeah, they're 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 prepared to to do that. They've got some some fan and ventilators and different things like that. They've uh, done before when they put some of these in and after the building's already open and rocking and rolling. So they have a pretty good plan in place. Good, good. Glad to hear that. Is there a warranty on their work? I guess. I Absolutely. Okay. Six months. <laughs> Six <laughs> hours. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. We had. Did we call the roll on that? Yes. Okay. All right, uh, what about the part-time employees? Yes, sir. Uh, we got a couple employees here. We have seven, I believe, total of number number seven here. Uh, and I guess I'll kind of look at the top there. We're, uh, we're looking at some, some camp counselors. Those camp counselors are seasonal full-time positions that we're looking to do there. And we have three there by the name of Destiny, Michaela, and Carson on the list there. We have uh, in that next little area there, it says front desk. Mallory is actually uh, for the cafe. It is not a, not a floater per se, but at the cafe there, and we'll do birthday parties. Uh, and then you have Ashley and Jordan for the front desk, the membership area. And then lastly on there is Mary Kate Markley, which is a lifeguard too. Uh, the camp positions are all technically new positions, but they are budgeted for the summer camp. We didn't have summer camp last year because we weren't open. So those are new positions that way. Uh, Mallory is to replace uh, the cafe worker in which we, we transferred over to the front desk at the last meeting that we did that. So she'll be replacing that cafe worker there. Ashley and Jordan are coming on. One of the things that we did from our thing is we wanted to make sure that we were cutting down lines. We wanted to make sure that there was as few lines as possible there in doing so to have some additional staffing at that front desk. That's in direct uh, response there to the commissioners letting us know that. So that's where those two are from. And then Mary Kate is just one more uh, lifeguard as we gear up for the summer there. That would technically be a new position, but is budgeted for the summer months. Okay, now have these all qualified? Yes. Yes, sir. What's the rate of pay? Which one? Camp is 850. So Destiny, Michaela, and Carson will be at 850 an hour. Okay. It was laying on your, uh, on the, just on the desk. Where it goes, I'm, I'm hey, there's a couple of letters missing from Mallory's name. It should be Shaletovich. Yeah. I don't doubt that. There might have even been some extra letters in there, to be honest with you, and some missing. Uh, I call her Mallory S. <laughs> that's pretty close. Her, her sister, I got it. Like, yeah, her, her sister works for me at the uh, Goofy Golf, so that's pretty close. Okay, having said all that, uh, what's your pleasure? I make a motion to uh, approve the Yay. 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 Anything else? There's only one other thing that I'd like to give out to the council very quickly here. Uh, one thing that we had talked about very briefly in a couple of those special meetings was talking about the marketing budget uh, in regards to kind of putting out in a quarterly basis so that way the council can you know look at that and kind of approve some of those funds early if you will uh, as you know in the marketing side we're marketing for you know the summer marketing is already done even though we're just coming into the summer that marketing is already done and gone we're actually moving into the next piece which will be 
summer retention, and then we'll move into fall, fall programming and getting back to school already. Uh, so this kind of breaks down the, the quarters, if you will, of the year. And this is, I want to make sure that the quarters match up. These are done in the fiscal year of the city. So when we say in the quarters, it's starting with May as being the first quarter. We are out of the New Year's resolution quarter. That, uh, that quarter happens to be in the fourth quarter for us. So instead of starting the game with New Year's resolutions, we finish the game with New Year's resolutions. So there's nothing at this time really that I'm asking for the council to do other than to review this information. And then as we come to the next meeting, potentially you know, look to approve kind of a pre, you know, a pre-approval of spending those quarterly amounts there especially on the media as those take production time and things like that they come up fairly quickly and fairly early compared to when we're going to use those dollars uh, especially as we kind of look at them based on what they are here i see you got the media placement uh, for the year would be forty-five thousand. that's a bulk of it yes sir uh just what will that consist of that's your television and radio ads <clears throat> Do we think that's going to be effective? So far in this past year, it's generated us about 2,700 units of membership, which will equate to about $1.3 million worth of revenue. You're thinking that the media has been responsible for 2,700 people? I certainly think the media has played a big role in that. Hillary's done a remarkable job in pushing that piece and getting membership up. and. Uh, you know, when I first was coming to meetings, when I first got here, we talked about how our membership was just going up by hundreds and hundreds every time that we got turned around. Um, that certainly has slowed, but to give you an idea, we're right now averaging about 30 new units of membership every week. Uh, that equates, if you take $50 an average collection rate between senior, adult, and family, so $50 average collection rate, that's $18,000 a year worth of revenue gained every single week right now. Um, that's tremendous growth going on right there. Uh, we are certainly bursting at the seams in membership and growing. Uh, the thing that's really great about that, and I'll have some statistics to show to you and get to you, you know, so you can kind of review them, is when we gave those stats when we were first opening, those were only new joins. There were no cancels. Everything was always up trajectory with everything. Now we're at a point where we actually have cancellations happening as well, which is normal. That's not a bad thing. It's just the norm. For, for our fitness center. Um, when I say that we're averaging 30 new units, that's net. So that means we're selling a lot more than 30. It's offsetting what we're losing as well, and we're in a positive side of 30. So we are doing a really remarkable job of still selling memberships. We know that there has to be a retention focus, and this is where that retention is, is back into that advertising, that media placement, letting them know that, you know, come into the gym, this is what we've got going on. These are the summer programs we have happening. You know, too hot outside? Our pool's always cool. Just a slogan. Came to my head like that. Even in the winter time. Then it's warm. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay. We have a letter from uh, Ron Ferguson, chairman of the Boston Street Community Center. Uh, he says, uh, we would like to recommend the following individuals for positions on the Boynton Street Community Center Board of Directors, David Feth and Dean Henderson. We are confident these individuals will be able to perform the mission set forth by the Board of Directors. We would like their terms to extend until December 2017. Please find attached the City of Marion authorization for background check. Uh, it's been uh, background check been completed. Yeah. 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 And we have a background check uh, on these two. Not, not that I'm aware of, uh, but I just want to defer to Alice because she, I, I think that Jane did uh, look them up on yeah. the, uh, So I would say it's, it's not good. Yeah, that's as far as it went. Yeah. We would have to finish that, but we'd have signed. Yeah. Have we haven't got that completed yet, but what kind of background would this qualify somebody to get on the board there? Yeah. Uh, like any sex crime, sex crime, things of uh, moral turpitude, uh, and of course you wouldn't want to put any bank robbers on there. 
uh, felony of conviction of most Catholics. Uh, like a felony shoplifting would qualify too, I think any felony or well, certain felony? Well, most felony, of course, I don't know very many felonies that shoplifting. There's sir. Yeah, that's plenty. Yes, sir. I'm with you on that. Well, I know there are a lot of misdemeanor uh, shop. Well, there's a lot of sales. How, how many people carried off the refrigerator from your store? The, the one that didn't pay me, is that carried it off? No. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a good one. I know two or three in town that still owe me. You're right, huh? And so there's a big difference in felonies. There's and I agree with you. Three hundred dollars, yeah. So yeah, I think that that's something we need to look at. And yeah. Yeah, like a case. rule break or something. Yeah. This okay. But you're right. You know, moral turpitude is, is, is something we need to look at. You know, a, a, a pedophile, a sexual yeah. abuser, or something like that. Absolutely. It has to be pretty serious stuff. That's it. And, and to, to uh, suppose the guy has got a misdemeanor shoplifting uh, conviction that's 10 years old. I, I think time erases a lot of stuff, too. For sure it does. So well, we, can look, we can go ahead and search. We'd have to get them to sign a background check. Well, well they get permission. They must have proven subject to. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Can, can we go ahead and prove these two? Sure. Pending. Subject to that. Okay. That's my motion. That's your motion. Second. Call the roll. Commissioner Vanilla? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Dawson? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. Okay. What's this uh, about the uh, contract for natural gas supplier? We would need to table that, uh, hopefully for a special meeting. Okay. That will be tabled. Having said that, now, uh, anyone have something they want to bring to the council? Okay, Anthony. Well, I, I did want to talk about this item nine or, or item C under old businesses uh, resolution for technical middle class. I, I mean, I don't. That's a move. Question. Yeah, I know it is now with Browner, but you know the thing of it is, I, I think you know we we've supported union workmanship in this city for a long, long time. In fact, we actually have a project labor agreement that any project over nine thousand has to be done by union work. Uh, and I, I think you know, a project I, labor agreement. Yes, and a project labor agreement. But you know, I just. It, it's, it scares me in this time when, you know, we're, we're so liberal on freedom of speech, but we, we, we can't give a worker the right to choose whether they want to be represented or not represented by a, a, a labor union or, or whatever. And I, that, I just, that does bother me, and I think, I think people have a right to choice. That's all I want. I'm not going to expand on any further. I think people in this, you know, this, you know, we just went through Memorial Day. People died to give them, up, give us our freedom, and and for one person to come in and say we're not going to allow you this freedom of choice anymore, I, I got a problem with that. So I, I'll leave it at that. Well, it, it's interesting. Uh, the the unions uh, came up with a resolution diametrically opposed to the resolution that was proposed by the governor. Well, the uh, legislature took up the problem and they uh, voted down 72 to nothing. That relieved the city of any uh, yes. need for, for action. A and all we would have done would, uh, it, by passing a, a resolution would have been to have stated our position have absolutely no legal effect. Uh, so uh, the legislature has spoken. Of course, I, I think it was uh, strictly according to political lines. I don't think a single Republican voted in favor of the resolution that 72 Democrats voted for. But uh, that was to be expected. Uh, 
the Democrat controlled legislature was not going to go along with what Governor Rauner had uh, proposed. Uh, everybody knew that was going to be the case. Well, so, why, why do you think, and this is just an opinion here because you've been around a long time, why do you think they just voted present? They didn't make a vote gay in that. That was a protest vote. I, I think that so, as much as anything else, it was a protest the way the thing was handled. Uh, but uh, that, I think, has been laid to rest, uh, for the time being at least, so we don't need to get involved. Uh, any, any, anything else? Oh, yes. Has everybody got their booklet? Yeah, that's a big okay. guy. You're, yeah. you're not going to get into the consent agenda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here in a minute. I, no, I, I got a motion to uh, pay the monthly bills as uh, funds become available. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Anella? Yay. Mr. Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Spread? Yay. Commissioner Bell? Yay. Yeah, yeah. And Yay. I'll make the motion to pay the consent agenda. Second. Call the roll. Commissioner Anella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Mr. Webb? Yay. Mr. Bell? Yay. Mayor Yeah. Anything else? That's it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, Angelo, do you have anything else? Uh, been thinking. Uh, would you uh, be willing to accept the uh, directorship of uh, animal control? Directorship of animal control? You'd be commissioner in charge of the animal control <coughs> operation. You have two employees. Three. three. Oh, three. Yeah, the far time on the now. And it was very interesting. We, we hired a lady to be the animal control person. Uh, she was overwhelmed, so we hired a man to be her assistant. And we didn't realize we were playing Cupid, but they wound up getting married. So, uh, it, it, it struck me as funny. Here's a man and a woman out chasing a dog and they fall in love. That happens. <laughs> you wind up getting married. That's a literal puppy love. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is there a little puppy love? Yeah. <laughs> then we had to hire a part time person so they could go on vacation together. They had to leave together at the same time on vacation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that'd be a good, good deal. Uh, Oh, okay, you, you had nothing to know. Yeah. I'd like to read a little note I got from the principal of Longfellow School there, they, uh, to whom it may concern that thank you so much for the new school zone warnings painted on the roads around Longfellow and the other Marion schools recently. We greatly appreciate you making the safety of our students a top priority. Our parents thank you too, Mike Horn, principal of Longfellow School. The member of the council voted to do that, so. This is a nice old note we got. That was very nice. Those were really attention getters. Yeah. They did a good job. Right. Oh, nice. yeah. I mean, it. And then uh, I passed this, uh, uh, had Steve to prepare a draft of an ordinance on the RVs and parking components. I think I can put it down there. It's strictly for everybody to look at and, and think about. Maybe next meeting we can take it up and talk about it. Did you, you should have got one of these. It's, it's, in, it's in his box. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just a proposed ordinance. Right. Right. Regulate the yeah. Hall Street parking. So yeah. maybe the next time we put it on the agenda and talk about it. Sounds good. Okay. okay. So we got. Okay. Uh, we have a letter here from uh, uh, Lanny Moss. So I would like to put in my resignation of employment for the reason of retirement. Chosen date is requested for July 17, 2015. I want to thank you for everything over the years. Did you get a copy of that? Yes, I did. Uh, so, uh, will she be replaced or will there be somebody just simply moving? No, there, there will be no replacement, nobody will be there. Okay, that sounds good. When is she leaving? July 17th. How long does she have one? Oh, oh my. She's 30, been here 30, 30 plus years. 30 wow. some odd years. Oh, yeah. yeah. 37 or 38. Yeah. 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 Gee whiz, and she's only 45, so. <laughs> So, yeah, she, young. she is the, the faithful employee. That's yeah. very good. She, she's been a, a good uh, city uh, worker. Very nice. Uh, and and uh, I get some tickle at her. Uh, 
I, I never see her walk. No. She's always in a run. You'll, you'll never lose her on a wooden wall. <laughs> no, no. You yeah. hear her coming and going. That's right. Her heel. And, and of course, uh, one, one big thing is she's had a very pleasant personality. And, and I'm sure that many of the city clients uh, have enjoyed uh, doing business with her. Uh, then I have another letter. This is uh, from Jane Kidwell. I would like to inform you of my pending retirement at the end of May 2015. Truly appreciate the honor of working with you. It will take many positive memories of my time with the city with me as I turn the page on a new chapter in my life. Just got this, uh, so haven't had much time to uh, consider. I think that, uh, of course, she's been a human resource uh, uh, person, uh, and I think uh, the position has filled a vital need uh, for the city. I think we need to be looking for someone to take her place. She told me that she knew of a person who was very well qualified to help us a similar situation uh, that she would recommend. I don't have the name. Jane does. So this is something we need to be considering since uh, she will be going at the end of the May. I, I think uh, she has done an outstanding job. I know that there have been occasions when some of the city employees have been a little uh, uh, disturbed uh, with her, but uh, she has always uh, had the city's best interest at heart, including the best interest of the uh, city uh, personnel. And uh, she has been head and shoulders of anyone that we've had previously in that position. because of her that it has come to my attention how important the, the position uh, is. I uh, have here uh, some emails. Uh, I've been getting complaints about the cross railroad crossing on Main Street and Boynton Street. And I mentioned this uh, to Glenn and Glenn, do you want to tell us uh, how the, this thing has evolved? Can you walk here? Oh, sure. Yeah. sure. Because <coughs> it, if it weren't for uh, Glenn's intervention, I don't know where we would be. Well, it started off with the trying to make contact with the Union Pacific hierarchy, and I was directed to uh, their PR guy in Chicago, Adrian Guerrero and uh, it's really initiated over in Route 13. We had uh, several complaints on that one, and nothing ever happened, but I got a hold of the gentleman from the Illinois Commerce Commission. He came down and said it's a hazardous crossing, and within two weeks, he had the Union Pacific people there fixing that crossing. And then it came to our attention again of the crossings at Boynton Street, which is in bad shape, and the one on Main Street, which is uh, getting pretty rough. So I told uh, Mr. Guerrero that, I, that he, in fact, he complained about going to the uh, Commerce Commission. And I mentioned to him, I said, well, before we go to the Commerce Commission, give you an opportunity to uh, get your crew down here and get it fixed. This is well, six weeks or so ago. And, and about two weeks ago, I said, well, I haven't seen you anymore. Are you going to get the crew down? Well, he said they will be down the 27th, which is tomorrow unless something has been changed. They'll start at Boynton Street, and I have to shut that one down while they're doing that, that crossing, and then they'll move over to Main Street and work on that one then. So theoretically, they're supposed to be down tomorrow to start on Boynton Street. How many, how many days are these crossing? Probably a day. Maybe a day and a half, but probably a day. <coughs> What's he? And, uh, but the, uh, Glenn is responsible for getting them to, to move because he, he knows the ins and outs and what it takes. And so we do appreciate well, it. And, and the crossings are, Borden particularly is in bad shape. Oh yeah. That's, a bad, yeah. that's, that's in bad shape. And Main Street is rough, but uh, not as bad as Borden. Not Borton. as bad as Borden, no. no. 
while we're talking about crossings, and I know these are the CONEs, uh, and when you, you go to their crossings at Gray and May, you know, uh, mm -hmm. on down by uh, George Jones uh, on Main Street, and then you go south on Oak Creel. Yeah, but none of those are the major railroads. That's all no, the CONEs. No, no, no. I mean, who puts a fire under them? But I mean, at least they're trying to attempt to do something. Well, well the it, Commerce yeah. Commission would have nothing to do with Commer that. Yeah, I can't, I can't go to the Commerce Commission with them. They're not regulated by them. <clears throat> it would have to be the city putting pressure on them, which is now Progressive Rail. And they're headquartered well, out of St. Louis. Perhaps we need to have uh, Steve put together a letter suggesting that they do something. Before we do that, let me let's talk to John. He's he's the guy in St. Louis. He's been pretty reasonable, and if he doesn't do it, you get get him moving. Okay. All then right. you'll, you'll take care of that. I'll, I'll talk to John in St. Louis. Yeah. That sounds good. Let's we'll see what see what can come out of it. If it doesn't, let's turn the big dog loose. <coughs> Thank you. I mean, they did an excellent job there when they redid Market Street. They did an excellent job there. Well, that that wasn't the Union Pacific. No, no, that was, wasn't that COD? That, that was COD. Yeah, the, city, the city helped out on that, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Big time. yeah, the city paid for that. Big time. That yes. was about yes. a $70,000 yeah. project. Yeah, yeah we, we paid most of that. Was when, paid that was when the CEO was running before Progressive Rail had it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that one on down there for uh, Gray Street, that's a bad one. Yeah, that, that is really bad. And they have made... Uh, Less than wholehearted effort to do something about it. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we got a public notice uh, of road uh, closure. Now, this could get to be uh, <coughs> tricky. Effective June the 1st for June the 15th. Morgan Avenue northbound ramp on the I-57 will be closed to traffic due to construction. The southbound ramp from I-57 on to Morgan Avenue will be closed due to construction. Now, we'll have a detour of some sort to take care of that. They have three message boards outlined to, to do this. If we need another message board, we can get it because I talked to the contractor this morning. Okay, so there'll be message boards uh, to alert the public to what we've uh, got here. And if the media could get that out to the to the public. Yeah. Uh, they have 15 days to get the two ramps uh, tied together. Get and the, the southbound one's a big one. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, the southbound will be open by the 15th, and it will stay open during the rest of the rest of construction season. The northbound will, will be... Uh, it will be open for from the like the 15th to the 9th to the 20th, 22nd, 22nd. to allow people on Morgan Avenue to go northbound. And then the 22nd, that'll be shut off for 60 days there. So Morgan will be, after the 20th, starting the 22nd, Morgan Avenue from one end to the other will be shut off. Can't go through. Uh, now that's what's going to be tough. And that's a 60 day period. But now the southbound uh, 57 after the 15th will be open full time. We might be able to get the southbound to 57 open sometime before the 60 day period is over. Might be able to get that one. So basically there's one way into Marion and one way out. Right? Well, there's no, you can take Morgan Avenue and go down to halfway and come back and do your, do your thing that way. Get back out to 13. 13 will be open. It'll never be shut down. The exit from 57 to the 13 ramp will always remain open. <coughs> well, For once fifth, you get the uh, signal board, sign boards in place, it'll, it'll make it'll, 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 yeah. yeah. They've been up for a day or two, I, in what I was oh, told, to alert down. the public what's going on. So is, is this the same work that they projected they wanted to start in November a couple of years ago, and you said absolutely not. 
not right before Christmas season they was going to shut we had, down. We told them to keep it open during the Christmas season before shutting it down. Now, we this they wanted to get started on this in May, but with the concert coming on on the June, the, uh, the, I guess it'd be June the 20th, I said we've got to have Morgan Avenue open all the way through. So that's when the 22nd then is when they'll start cutting it off. And and you're not going to be able to go east to west across Morgan Avenue. Right, that, uh, the bridge. Uh, the bridge would be shut off. So basically, it would be part of the halfway road. Yeah. 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 Except to get into the mm -hmm. yeah. You'll be able to get, and for a 15 day you period, you're not going to be able to have the southbound. Yeah. About that. Yeah. But after the 15 day period, that southbound will be open for full time. Okay, uh, Terrence? Yeah. Goss, Commissioner Goss wants you to give us a little presentation here. You started something <laughs> that's very good. I want you to tell us all about Terrence, it so the public will know it. Before you do that, why don't you go back and put the camera on <laughs> Yeah, turn yeah, the camera on. I was around. wondering <laughs> why you, he did that <laughs> intentionally. Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah, if you've got something to start here, it's very worthwhile. I want people I were to know that. All right. Well, I appreciate well, need, it. Need a stool there, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. You can't see what she doesn't like to point that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, now let's proceed. All right. So once a month, I'd like to be able to come to the council and give you guys kind of an update on what's going on with our, our city app um, and what's going on with our requests that we get from our citizens. Uh, to date, uh, we've only had our, out, our app out for less than 30 days, really, and we've got a little over 600 people that's downloaded our app. Uh, that's what, what is an app? An app is our application that we have on our cell phone. So it was the cell phone application that we have. So with this application, what it will give our citizens the ability to do is to see a, a pothole or, uh, I mean, we get a lot of requests for abandoned houses and... Um, uh, RV camping and, oh, okay. and a what, lot of different things. What, what do you do with those uh, requests? Um, the requests that we get, so let's say that a person goes through and they have a an house issue like it's posted on yeah. the app here, yeah. then that goes directly to um, um, code enforcement which is um, Kathy. So Kathy gets it, she checks marks the box basically acknowledging that she has received this request from a citizen. The citizen gets a, an email back immediately saying that someone is on it, then she disp dispatches the proper person. Okay, suppose somebody has a complaint about a pothole in the street in front of their house. That's well, right. What so, happens with that? We fix it. Yeah, and, and Johnny... <laughs> it winds up going to the street department. It does. Yeah. It goes straight to the street department. Um, if we've got animal control um, um, you know, on there as well. So we've had some... Um, um, request over the weekends where people have some stray animals and I think there was a badger problem or something. Someone had some, it was an issue. It was an animal. <laughs> maybe not a badger, but it was some issue that they had. And it goes straight. The West Coast. <laughs> I can't wait for maybe football. Yeah. Did you see the lady down at Creel with some of the animals she had? On TV the night, and that was terrible. Yeah, that's that's a good point there, Johnny just made. You may not have heard that it <coughs> once it's completed it, it'll say that if it has the action has a good thing, it stays open. That's exactly right. And when the action is stayed open, it stays open for uh, every week. Different supervisors within that department, um, including Gil, will get those emails saying, Hey, this issue is open, this citizen has a request that needs to be taken care of. What's the response? And so uh, eventually it gets all closed out and completed. And as of this afternoon, we had two issues open that are kind of a long term because it involves, one is a street issue that involves drainage and Doug is talking to all the neighbors in an area trying to get a, a drainage issue figured out. Sunset. Yes, and it's, it's, it's a, pri I mean, it's not something that the city well, can this actually. This is great, this is a citizen friendly operation. Yes, but, it, but we've, and the other one, I mean, we've had, so our issues closed out very quickly. Um, the <laughs> department handles them. I, I, street departments had a, about 100% completion, yeah, so. 
they have done yeah. a great job. You have Katie, Katie Connell, and uh, Kathy. I mean, they get them constantly, and they're on top of them. And Johnny goes around, make sure that the work is being done. Uh, and that wasn't a badger; it's a groundhog. <laughs> That's right. You picked a good time to take it off. Yeah. So yeah. So once a month, we just want to uh, go through and give you guys just an update on what's going on with their requests and how they're being fulfilled. <laughs> you know. We appreciate that. All right. Thank you guys. Good job. Good job. Thank you. And. Uh, I have seen a proposed street program for the summer, uh, which would uh, come in at the cost of about a million dollars. A little over a million dollars. And uh, of course, that hasn't been presented for approval yet. Uh, I, I want to go over some of the uh, streets myself. Not that I have any question about the judgment of the street commissioner. You won't see any potholes because we've got it fixed. So there's no reason to spend a million no, dollars. No, we probably don't even need to consider it. Very, very <laughs> nice. But uh, what one stretch was from here down to the, the square down to Lily, East Main. I drove that. I couldn't see anything wrong with it the way it is. But then they had a stretch from the uh, railroad I'm not sure which railroad it was, uh, to the uh, Creel Springs Road. Well, I, I drove east, and it was pretty good. But I turned around and drove west, and, and I saw two cracks, one on each lane. And I could see why somebody uh, proposed that, that needed uh, some work. But a million dollars, uh, half out of motor fuel tax and half out of uh, gas tax, gas tax. It, it would exhaust those two funds. Mm -hmm. No, it would exhaust the motor fuel tax. Well, so we would cut it thirty-six thousand a month on that. Yeah. So I think well, we're in good shape. We don't have money left in the MFT. Yeah. It will pretty well take your gas tax. Yeah. yeah. The MFT, we'll have that back in debt. Well, gas tax too. There. It, 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 it replenishes itself. So you got to remember, we didn't do any streets last year. Because they didn't need it. No, because we had uh, places for the money to go elsewhere. We wouldn't get into that. That's, that's yeah. why I I'm, uh, re really want to be very careful about spending all this money yeah. uh, in, in, in such a fashion. Yeah. I just want to make sure that it's needed. Well, I, I value your opinion on this, and I want you to look at it. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll come to I, agreeable I, I, I'm, an, I'm an expert on cracks and highways. Yes, you are. <laughs> All I know is our engineers tell us if we don't no. do it, we would be putting down a sub, no. subgrade next year. And see, last year we didn't do anything, so you figure 500000 per year is pretty cheap. It all depends. <laughs> it all depends on what is needed. You, you see, okay. just for, the, the problem with government is people in charge are going to spend up to the amount of money that is available. They don't think about spending less than is available. Even if there is not a need, they're going to find some place to put it. Now, I'm not suggesting that the street department is the matter. No, I'm uh, known to be very frugal on it. Yes. But what I'm saying yeah. is uh, that, that, that's just a rule of thumb. Yes. The government yeah. spends up to the amount of money that it's got available uh, some governments, federal and state, spend more money than they've got. Yes, and we don't do that. No. There's some there's some streets that we really need to have gotten this year that we can just cut off. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. Got, there, you, there's no doubt. You take you take Pentecost and Bainbridge out there, that's starting to get big cracks and yeah. just starting to break. And if you wait too long, an overlay, you've got to do too much base repair before you put your overlay on there. I've got no problem in taking care of those that really need it. But I am opposed to something just for the aesthetics. I agree right? with that. And we only do what's needed. And well, I Glenn, just want to make sure that we maintain that rule. Glenn, how's the asphalt prices now compared to like a year ago? <laughs> Last year they were 105, 107. I've talked to the suppliers. We've estimated 107 for this year. Uh, 
I wouldn't be too surprised to see 110, 115 dollars a ton. Uh, two or three years ago, we were getting it for 60 some odd dollars a ton. And even just, with the oil prices down there, they're still maintaining their price. Now, is it with, with the fact that we've got a monopoly in asphalt uh, provision? Does it have any effect on that? Oh, I doubt that. They're 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 community minded. They would. You, you only have one outfit that no, they would has that. asphalt. No, and they're, they're community minded. They wouldn't raise it just because it's good. No, no. Well, why is Brian laughing? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, really, really. That's, yeah, that's, that's a good way. question. What's what's asphalt prices in Carbondale compared to Marion? I don't know. That's a fair question. Well, a lot of times that depends on how close you are to the plants, you know. Yeah. Uh, how close you are to we get we get we get as good or better prices from Carbondale typically. Yeah. Yes, we do. So, yeah. Even though the one supplier might be located someplace. In well, I'm just talking about general road construction projects because they did much rather work in. I should say. Sure. Go yeah. ahead. They'd much rather work in Marion than any place uh, in Southern Illinois. Is is this? I know their, that even though they haven't said it. They get their money quick here. Is, is this is the plant South of Marion still open and, and operational? It's operational, but it's not being operated. It, it could be, but it isn't. Mo well, mostly, as, as I've been told, they use that for their private work. So, so where are they getting this asphalt? Probably from the Carbondale plant. Okay. Uh, Travis, did you have anything you wanted? Okay, uh, this is a uh, regular meeting. Uh, any reason for it to be continued? No, we got that water plant or line contract we need to do something with. Anthony? Well, we can call a special meeting if it's necessary. Well, you're going to talk to Kevin first, right? Yeah. I haven't, he was, he, I, I guess I need to text him today. He was, I guess, out in equipment somewhere he didn't answer. If you looked at your bids, you know, we, uh, we submitted a, in the EPA a loan for $565,000. We submitted five projects, and they came in uh, $399,000. Now, the 565 was the total project cost. Yeah. And construction originally went in at 465 So, and it came in. Well, yeah. right under 400000 so. uh, Mayor, our gas contract needs to be looked at before the end of May. So it's, it's currently um, our energy consultant, our uh, Brent Kane and Steve Wozorczyk are still, they, we've just got a new price refreshing today, so it's not ready to be distributed to the council for us to do at this point in time. Uh, no, it would have to be a special meeting uh, or I, we have, but if Glenn wanted to bring up his water main, we'd have to look at the special meeting. So, I mean, hopefully I'll have it by Friday. Um, well, uh, okay, then can we attend this meeting by Friday? But if, if you want to do. Yeah, it'll be ready quickly, you can have a council meeting. Will that be ready by Friday? Oh, yeah. No, so we, we can't do it. It's not on the agenda. Well, it's not on the agenda. Just adjourn this meeting and set a special meeting for the purposes of those two items. Yeah, even though the one is on the regular agenda. Yeah, but you can't do yeah. this. And if you're yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Then that's what we'll do. <coughs> uh, we will call for a special meeting. What, what time would be best? 4.30. 4.30. Right. Okay, we'll need a uh, motion for a special meeting on Friday, whatever the date is, at 4.30, to consider uh, the contract uh, the water main. on the water mains and the uh, natural gas supply contract. Daniel, did we want to consider the Like to uh, present a name for uh, the other dispatch employee. Okay.
Okay, we'll so that would be include that right. in there. Right. Okay, need a motion. Make that motion. Second. Call the roll. Commissioner Manella? Yay. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Yay. Commissioner Goff? Yay. Mayor Butler? Yay. Steve, do we have an update on the city hall? We change the locks and all that. But do you know? You, as I've said before, it's our property. We can do whatever we want. We've sent him a couple of letters. I've been over visiting several times. I've mentioned it to him. I've told him we've taken it over. I, my judgment is we take it over. And and the keys were uh, I actually went through it this morning. So has the locks been changed? The locks have been changed. So and, okay. And we have the keys. So where's the problem? Uh, we just, if anybody uh, is interested in, in seeing it, we would need to have a city employee go with them because of, uh, of the conditions of the building and there's no electricity. So parts are very dark. So it will be available for some use if the city approves later on? Yes. Yes. Okay. So those might be interested could come and talk to you. Okay. Sounds good. That having been said, a motion to adjourn will be in order. Yeah. Mr. Hightower, do you want to call the